everyone in this video we are going to discuss about a ENT topic called laryngitis the word laryngitis is divided into two larynx and itis larynx is nothing but the larynx and itis is inflammation the inflammation of larynx is laryngitis you can see in the picture here which i have uh, given in green it is nothing but the larynx or the voice box the larynx is also known as a voice box because it will contain the vocal cords. These vocal cords which are given in the white color here, they open and close which produces a pressure which creates the vibrations. These vibrations will create uh, the pressure is going to create the vibration which helps in the production of voice. This helps in speech. So we also saw the function of uh, larynx. And the anatomy which contains the vocal cords. The definition inflammation and swelling of the mucous membrane lining the larynx or voice box. So we saw here the mm, mucous membrane of the larynx. There is a swelling. The mucous membrane which is present here. Whenever there is a swelling and inflammation of the mucous membrane which was lining the larynx. Which is located in the upper part of the respiratory tract. So you can see here there is inflammation and swelling of the mucous membrane which is lining the larynx and the larynx is situated in the upper respiratory tract. This inflammation and swelling is caused by chemical mechanical irritation or bacterial infection. So guys you can see here either it is a chemical irritation or a mechanical irritation. These chemical irritations are the acids. The strong acids are inhaled or uh, you can see here even the paint thinners you see those are also uh, very uh, harmful to the larynx whenever they are inhaled or in, uh, ingested they are swallowed it can lead to the irritation resulting in the inflammation and swelling of the mucous membrane which is lining the larynx. Even the bacterial infection can also cause laryngitis. So this is about the definition. Then we move on the laryngitis, the types. The laryngitis is categorized as acute laryngitis and chronic laryngitis. Starting with the acute laryngitis, again the acute is further divided into infectious type and a non-infectious type. The causes of infectious type is, first starting with the infectious type, it is more common compared to the non-infectious one. And it is following the upper respiratory tract infection. So any other infection that is the pharyngitis or whatever the upper other respiratory tract infections, sinusitis, rhinitis, sinusitis, pharyngitis, all these upper respiratory tract infections following them, the laryngitis of infectious type can occur. To begin with, it is viral in origin. But soon the bacterial invasion takes place. So guys you see here starting it starts with the viral. The virus is going to be the cause. It is viral in origin. Later on the bacteria these bacteria are going to invade. The bacteria the name of the bacteria are the streptococcus pneumonia, haemophilus influenza, hemolytic streptococci, staphylococcus aureus. So you see here streptococcus that is pneumonia, streptococci, that is hemolytic streptococci, then staphylococcus, then the last one haemophilus influenza. These are the bacteria which are invading later on. Then you see here in the infectious type what's happening, the exanthematous fever like measles, chicken pox and woofing cough are also associated with the laryngitis. We see here the exanthematous fevers, that is the fevers which contain the eruptions and the rashes, like those of the chicken pox, measles will also be associated with laryngitis. This is about the infectious type. Now we move on to the non-infectious type. It is due to the vocal abuse, allergy, thermal or chemical burn. So guys, we saw the chemical burns is because of those strong acids, paint thinners. Now let us see what is thermal burn. Thermal burns are nothing but the hot liquids or the hot solids whenever they are swallowed. The flames, the superheated steam, all these come under the chemical burns, thermal burns, sorry. It is uh, whenever these burns are caused to the larynx, it is due to the ingestion or inhalation of the various substances which I mentioned or laryngeal trauma. 
the laryngeal trauma could be because of the strangulation we have studied in fmt that the strangulation the assault the gunshot to the larynx the throat can also cause a damage to the larynx the vehicle accidents all these come under the laryngeal trauma such as the endotracheal intubation so guys during the intubation whenever there is a change in the position of the head or the body of the person of the patient during the anesthesia if there is an uh, um, like mistake or an uh, thing done during the endotracheal intubation then that can also cause a laryngeal trauma you can see here the process sorry guys here uh endotracheal intubation and then these are all the chemical burns and the thermal burns and also the allergy the vocal abuse can also be there now we move on to the symptoms of laryngitis in the symptoms of laryngitis there is hoarseness which may lead to the complete loss of voice so guys uh, when we suffer from laryngitis what happens starting with the hoarseness of voice then they come to a stage where there is a complete loss of voice pain and discomfort in the throat particularly after talking so whenever there is there is inflammation there is swelling so you are causing a uh, more strain to the throat so while talking it is putting a pressure and a strain on it so there is discomfort as well as pain in the throat dry irritating cough which is usually worse at night so you can see here the person in laryngitis will also have cough general symptoms of headache cold rawness and dryness of throat malaise guys what's malaise that is the discomfort or the restlessness what a person feels during a, a disease and fever if laryngitis has followed viral infection of upper respiratory tract so we saw laryngitis is usually following the infection of upper respiratory tracts such as rhinitis sinusitis so whenever it is following the infection of a upper respiratory tract it can also be associated with fever So guys let us see summarize what are the clinical features first thing is the hoarseness then there might be complete loss of voice second we saw the pain and discomfort in the throat third is the cough hoarseness pain and discomfort cough then you see the general symptoms under general symptoms you have to write the headache cold rawness and dryness of throat malaise and lastly concluding with fever in fever it is it occurs if it is following some acute re upper respiratory tract infection we saw the symptoms cough fever sore throat dry throat there is also hoarseness of voice and complete loss of voice as well the laryngeal appearance now you see uh, the examination the laryngeal appearance how it is going to be in the early stages there is edema and erythema edema is nothing but swelling and erythema erythema is nothing but the red redness of the skin where is this edema and erythema found in the epiglottis ary epiglottic folds arytenoids and ventricular bands but the vocal cords appear white and near normal So guys you see here these uh, words what they are saying here the parts you will see it in the next slide I'll show you that will give you a clear understanding this is the epiglottis see here this is the epiglottis then you see the ary epiglottic folds these are nothing but the ary epiglottic folds then we saw the ventricular bands this is nothing but the ary epitin uh, ary ary epiglottic space okay this is going to be the space this is a fold this is a fold and in between is the ary epiglottic space this is what you have to remember now let us move back we were studying about the laryngeal appearance what's happening you have to remember there is erythema and edema of what epiglottis ary epiglottic folds arytenoids and ventricular bands but the vocal cords which we saw in the first slide what's happening but the vocal cords which will appear white and also near normal you can see these white are nothing but the vocal cords in the later stages what's happening 
hyperemia and swelling is going to increase the vocal cords will also become red and swollen you can see in the picture here the vocal cords completely red and swollen here okay the subglottic region will also get involved sticky secretions are seen between the cords and interarytenoid region i showed you the interarytenoid region here here what's happening there is sticky secretions which are found in between the cords and also in the interarytenoid region you can look in the picture here the sticky secretions in case of the vocal abuse submucosal hemorrhage may also be seen in the vocal cords so what's happening even it can go to an extent of bleeding you can see the pictures here hemorrhage can also occur this is happening in the later stages let us summarize the later stages there is hyperemia and the swelling is going to increase second thing we see it is becoming red and swollen same thing subglottic region you have to mention about the subglottic region and the sticky secretions which are in between the cords and also in the interarytenoid region lastly the hemorrhage may also be seen submucosal hemorrhage is also seen in the later stages this is all about the acute laryngitis now let us start the discussion with chronic laryngitis so guys you see here in the chronic laryngitis the vocal cords being dull red swollen and rounded in detail we'll discuss there are two types chronic laryngitis without hyperplasia and chronic hypertrophic laryngitis so you see here chronic laryngitis without hyperplasia it is a diffuse inflammatory condition symmetrically involving the whole larynx <clears throat> so basically the whole larynx is going to be involved it is an inflammatory condition which is diffuse not localized it is a diffuse condition it is involving the whole larynx the whole larynx summarizes the true cords the ventricular bands interarytenoid region and the root of epiglottis we have seen all these in the pictures previous pictures so guys you see here the whole larynx which are including the true cords the interarytenoid region the ventricular bands and the root of epiglottis so all this is involved and what's happening here it is inflammatory condition the swelling is seen in all these what are the causes for a chronic laryngitis why does a person have a chronic laryngitis it is following incompletely resolved acute simple laryngitis or the recurrent attacks of laryngitis so whenever the person doesn't take a treatment for the simple laryngitis it is incompletely resolved or it is suppressed what's happening or uh, the chronic laryngitis can be found in a person and also you see the recurrent attacks again the person is suffering with acute laryngitis uh, frequently this whenever there is an increased frequency of acute laryngitis it can land up in chronic one presence of chronic infection in the paranasal sinus teeth tonsils and chest are important contributory causes so we saw whenever there is an infection in the neighborhood that is in the nasal paranasal sinuses near the nose the sinus and the teeth tonsils chest all these can also cause the chronic laryngitis then the occupational factors like the exposure to dust and fumes such as miners golden iron smiths and also the workers in chemical industries you can see the picture here the person in the uh, mine uh, he's a miner in a coal miner you can see there is an exposure to dust and also to the fumes in the iron smiths coal smiths in these people and also the purple uh, people working in the chemical industries these these people will be exposed to fumes and dust this can lead to chronic laryngitis smoking and alcohol people habituated to these smokings alcohol intoxicants persistent trauma of the cough and chronic lung diseases so people suffering with the chronic lung diseases where they have persistent cough it can cause a trauma of larynx then we move on to the chronic hypertrophic laryngitis so guys you can see here without hyperplasia this was 
without hyperplasia hyperplasia is nothing but increase in the number of cells here what's happening it is a chronic laryngitis but there is no increase in the so see here this is a chronic hyperplastic laryngitis this thing is not going to occur there is no hyperplasia just for the diagram i had taken this picture the vocal cords the ventricular bands interarytenoid spaces epiglottis and all that but this thing is not going to happen it is only a diffuse inflammatory condition without the hyperplasia whereas here in the hypertrophic trophic is the increase in the size trophic is the in plasia is the hyperplasia is the increase in the size there there was without hyperplasia here it is hypertrophic you see there is an increase in the number of the cells it may be either diffuse or it could be a symmetrical process of a localized one localized is here uh, the same place there is an infection it could appear like a tumor of a larynx the localized variety can present like a vocal nodule you can see here the vocal nodule here vocal polyp in the picture here the polyp which is formed and a contact ulcer it can also be formed uh, in the it can also appear like a contact ulcer in the larynx so guys in the hypertrophic one how is it it is like a polyp or a nodule or an ulcer it is appearing like a tumor of larynx clinical features sex the chronic hypertrophic laryngitis or the chronic laryngitis it is affecting affecting mostly the males 8 is to 1 ratio out of 9 eight men and one women 8 is to 1 ratio is found age is 30 to 50 years are mostly affected hoarseness constant desire to clear the throat we are seeing the clinical features here how does the pre patient present with chronic laryngitis there is hoarseness of voice they have a constant desire to clear their throat dry cough is present in them tiredness of voice and discomfort in the throat when voice has to be used for a long period of time what do they uh, what do they feel there is tiredness of voice and also discomfort felt in the throat when the, it is used for a long period of time so what are the clinical features hoarseness desire to clear throat dry cough tiredness of voice is found in them okay the laryngeal appearance now we see the examination in the chronic laryngitis how is the larynx appearing laryngeal mucosa is general dusky red and thickened in general what's happening to the mucosa it is becoming dusky red and thickened vocal cords will appear red and swollen the mucosa and also the entire vocal cord you see it is red and swollen the edges of the vocal cords will lose their sharp demarcation you can see here the vocal cords have their demarcation but here the vocal cords are losing their demarcation and they appear rounded in the late stages cord will become bulky giving a nodular appearance you see it will uh, become so bulky that it will start giving a nodular appearance the ventricular bands appear red and swollen everything guys the vocal cords red and swollen mucosa red and swollen ventricular bands red and swollen you see the ventricular bands they appear red and swollen mobility of the cords will get impaired so you see the, uh, there must be a good mobility of the cords so that the enough pressure is created and can help in the clear voice production but here the mobility of the cords is impaired why is the mobility impaired it is because of the edema you can see here in the picture edema and infiltration and later due to the muscular atrophy and finally what's happening there is muscular atrophy thank you with this we come to an end of uh, acute and chronic laryngitis hope everything is clear if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe